What up, Spadicey gang? I wanted to do a video where I went over the things that happened last year. Just have a, a really good collective get together of what 2022 was. Bit of a rough year. I had a lot of health issues last year, as I do every year. Thanks, parents. My dad's legacy, that's what he left me, is health issues. And emotional damage. But overall, besides health issues, it was a pretty good year. Thank miss. $10 million. How absolutely nuts is that to have one of the biggest fundraisers in 10 hours on the YouTube platform? Crazy. Super proud of that. Thank you. But also Project Iris, something I was putting off for a very long time and then finally bit the bullet and did it. Also got plenty of those lined up for this year that I'm hopefully gonna do. Come on, ADHD brain, you can get through it. No need to be shy about it. Rip off the band-aid and go, baby! I did win an award. Moment. The stream awards? Which, let's face it, I'm not a streamer. I show up on Twitch once every 14 weeks and I won Best Philanthropist Streamer. So thank you guys. Had some big series on the channel, God of War Ragnarok, baby. I guess this is a good segue to go into Best Video Games 2022 as rated by Jacksepticeye. I'm gonna bring up a list in case I forget. <laughs> Obviously, the best video game of 2022. was Elden Ring. As a big gamer myself, as a big FromSoft fan, as a big weeaboo, it was incredible. I have finished it 14 times now. So, I love FromSoft. Elden Ring was absolutely incredible. Not my favorite FromSoft game. Bloodborne is still top. Then it's like Sekiro. Then Elden Ring and Dark Souls 3 are kind of tied. Then Dark Souls 1. And then Dark Souls 2. Because nobody likes Dark Souls 2. That game controls like ass. It's not that bad. It's still better than most games. The pedigree of the other games are quite high. Oh, and Demon Souls! That's still above Dark Souls 2. Second best game of 2022? The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe Edition. I know technically it doesn't really count because it already came out. and This is like a re-release with added content. But I loved it. The Bucket has deemed me worthy! I am the Bucket God! It was... Absolutely phenomenal. I had a great time with it. Other great video games that came out. Stray. Gotta play as a cat. It was super fun. Meow meow. Walking around. And then God of War Ragnarok. I think the more time I've had away from God of War Ragnarok, the less desire I have to go back to it. I, I keep thinking I want to go back to God of War 2018 and not this one. So uh, maybe that says a lot about it. Oh, the Cuphead DLC. Of course. So good! God, just take two syringes and inject that game directly into my brain. That was awesome. I absolutely love that game. Oh, and Vampire Survivors. How could I forget that game? I lost my life to that game, and I'm not ashamed of it at all. You might look at the screenshot and go like, mm, that doesn't look great. That doesn't look anything special. Wrong! Vampire Survivors, legit, go play it. There's some other stuff that I didn't like last year that everyone else seems to love, and maybe I'm just a grumpy old man now. Maybe I'm a boomer. Horizon Forbidden West, I played like five hours of it, and then I was like, I'm done. I don't like this game. I tried to play Xenoblade Chronicles for the first time last year, and then just stopped playing it. I don't know why. I still tried to finish Red Dead Redemption 2 last year. I still can't get through that game. It is too much game. I have other stuff to be doing. Right now I'm playing through Stardew Valley with Evelyn, and it's fucking nuts. I haven't stopped playing it, and I can't stop thinking about it, and I want to play it right now. Anyway, that's video games. We're going through movies next. Shout out movies! Who likes movies? Hey, I like movies. Yay, I love movies. No one. Oh. I think about how things are made all the time. And the movie that stuck out to me the most last year for that kind of stuff. This is Wang. This is Wang. This is Wang. Mrs. Wang, are you with us? I am paying attention. Everything, everywhere, all at once. What an insane movie, made by the Daniels. Everybody else had already seen it. It was out for like two and a half weeks by the time I saw it, so that's really late. But I, oh man. It's exactly right up my alley with like multiverse 
time sort of, it's not really time travel, but technically if you think about it, it is. But also the acting was so good. It reminds me of Hot Fuzz and why Hot Fuzz is my favorite movie of all time is because there's not a single ounce of wasted material in that movie. And I feel like Everything Everywhere was kind of like that as well. I think it made me cry like three times. And even on a rewatch, I cried three more times. It was so heartfelt, so awesome. What a champion of a movie. Second favorite movie of the year. The Banshees of Inish Aaron. I had high expectations for it because I like Martin McDonough. I like In Bruges quite a bit. It was such a fun movie. The band was getting back together for another movie and it was going to be based in Ireland with all Irish actors. It reminded me of being like a kid back in Ireland watching Irish TV shows that nobody else outside of Ireland really would have watched. Not only does it look great, it's so well shot. There's so many incredible camera angles in it. The cinematography on its own is fantastic. But seeing Irish actors being in their Irish element and just be kind of like... Are you Rowan? I don't think we're Rowan. But now everybody's watching it and everyone's talking about it and you get to see Irish culture in a different light. There's something about it like being an Irish man growing up during the 90s, there's like a lot of unsaid emotions and I, I've been trying so hard to like get past that and get over it and not like live the same sort of life. I know so many other people back home in Ireland who have felt the exact same way and it's like that type of life still exists for a lot of people. Really cool movie. I think everyone should go watch it. And then my third favorite movie of the year. Was Top Gun Maverick because that is just a movie. It feels like a, like a movie. I mean, it's so cliche and generic to be like, that's why we go to the movies. But you know what I mean when I say that. Go to the theater film movie. It feels like a whole big movement when that movie came out and it was like you have to go see that in a theater. It was so incredible. I felt like I was in the plane with them. I can't help but sound like a really generic movie reviewer when I say that kind of stuff but it was so good. You just want to see people in jets do crazy shit and that's all it was. It was fucking awesome. Anyway shout out Batman as well. I was kind of like a six out of ten when I saw it at the theater and I was like yeah I don't know if I like that. It was really fucking long. I really like Robert Pattinson and I was like he's like give him more to do. He's just Standing around going like, <gasps> also really liked X and Pearl came out last year. I liked Prey, the Predator movie. I thought that was really cool. I'm literally just going down a list of movies to see which ones I've seen and which ones I actually liked. That's probably going to be it. Let's move on to TV shows. My favorite TV show of last year was Severance. As if you couldn't tell by the way I do my iris stuff, the like clean cut sort of look to it. It was just right up my alley. It's exactly the type of stuff that I like watching. It was really well acted. It kept me going along like a little rat in a maze. I was like really wanted to know what was going on by the end of it. Great cliffhanger at the end. Which, can we talk about this for a second? Can we all talk about this? Yeah. The amount of shows that always end on cliffhangers. That's how seasons of a TV show end. Has anybody ever watched Lost? It was all cliffhangers every fucking episode. And then Severance ended and everyone was like, oh my god, they left it like that? What is wrong with them? I'm sorry that not everyone's like Netflix and they just wrap it up and cancel it after one season. No one has any fucking patience anymore. They just want to jump online and be like, I want all the answers now. What else did I watch? Obi-Wan Kenobi? Hated it. Thought it was really bad. The show that I love the most, say something bad about it and we'll get that dialogue going. And then everyone will start getting up in arms in the comments. That's how social media works. I wanted to see Obi-Wan Kenobi as a depressed alcoholic. There's like a scene where he's walking along, he sees Anakin, Vader, like over in the distance. He's kind of like half and half. More of that. I want to see him be absolutely messed up. The action was bad. The cinematography was sloppy. The editing was really sloppy. Obi-Wan, I want to see dark, gritty, serious stuff when it comes to Star Wars these days. It's too because that is the real answer is that ah, I was fine, but I just didn't really like it. Sandman. I don't know anything about the Sandman comic. But season one of that was pretty good. Welcome to Wrexham. I know I gush over Ryan Reynolds a lot and he's like my favorite celebrity. And Let's put Ryan in a box and put him over here. The documentary itself is awesome. Everyone should go watch it. I guarantee you, if you don't like football, you'll still enjoy it. I really liked it. I didn't think I would, but it's very, very good. Guillermo del Toro's house, uh, uh, cabinet of curiosities. There's no house in there. That's what American Horror Story wishes it was. I think there's some real potential in it. I love this sort of like anthology idea that's going around on Netflix right now. Same with um, Love, Death and Robots. That was also great. I think it's fine to just have a one-off and I'm so glad that there's these collections that get to do it because otherwise they probably wouldn't exist. The rehearsal. <laughs> 
Oh my god, I've never been more uncomfortable watching a show. I watched this all on a plane on the way to LA. My whole flight was just this show and I, oh my god, I don't even know how to describe what happened. It was so cringe, but so amazing at the same time. I don't know how Nathan Fielder does it. It made me feel so bizarre. Now we've come to the section of the video where we talk about Lord of the Rings and House of the Dragon. Because my opinions on these flipped. Game of Thrones is fun, hated how it ended, obviously, as 98% of the world did. a better story. I was like, oh, the Lord of the Rings TV show is gonna be awesome. And after one episode of both, I was like, yeah, Lord of the Rings is gonna take this. This is gonna be awesome. They're not even in competition with each other, but in my mind, go, fight. TV shows fight for me. And then as the shows went on, Lord of the Rings turned into a big steaming pile of nonsense and House of the Dragon was lit. Again, I swing in both directions. I'm all or nothing, baby. I'm either really hard on myself and down on myself and miserable and depressed one day, and then flying high in cloud nine the next day. Lord of the Rings, House of the Dragon. That's how it goes. Guys, I have something that I need to confess. I don't like Stranger Things. No, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm stuck, dude. Stop throwing stuff. I'm not gonna like all the same things that you like. Knock, knock. Earth to you. Wake up. Get off my back and sue me for not liking the things that you like. Season one of Stranger Things was incredible. And then the seasons after that started to fall apart a little by little by little. And then season four is here. And I just feel like it's too much. Do something! Your characters are running in circles all the fucking time. Why is Hopper in a Russian jail? Just so, the spoilers, I guess. Just so he escapes. Just so he gets caught to go back. Just so he escapes. Just so he goes back again. And all of that was so you could kill one Demogorgon and then just show up at the end and be like, Hey kiddo. What was that? You flip-flopped in his character the way I flip-flop on my opinions. All Eleven did was go back to season one and do the same things again. And then she just goes, ah! She's a great actress. Give her more to do. Oh, and who do we have? Eddie, the best actor in the season? Oh, let's just kill him. Because you won't kill one of your main characters, will you? The way I describe Stranger Things now is that they make the show so that people will make TikToks out of it. Technically, it's still better than most other TV shows that are out there. And it looked really good. Except for Vecna's design. I hate that. Give him something more than just being a dude wrapped in rubber. And my biggest disappointment of the year... was 1899. I think Dark on Netflix is like top three TV shows all time for me now. Again, a show that was acted incredibly well. Everybody was speaking in their own language instead of defaulting to English. And then Netflix cancelled it after the first season. But I had a really high hopes for it. Anyway, that's it. I could talk all day about this stuff. I'm very passionate when it comes to media. What were your favorite TV shows? What was your favorite stuff out of 2022? What was your favorite Jacksepticeye video? Your favorite YouTube video in general? To be honest. I want to see comments that are like, a blah, 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 blah. Show more. Boom. Massive. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. I want to do more stuff like this on the second channel. I just want to be out with my brush. I don't know what this is. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.